I got my, uh, my other stove here. Last year, I showed you guys my uh, just little pop-up stove. Uh, used a solid fuel. This one here is one of those little square stoves that you see a lot of people using now. They come in various sizes, and they come in uh, titanium and as well as whatever metal this is. I don't know what the metal of this one is. So you, you just have the piece here. You have your metal bottom part. Stick that in. Make sure it wraps all the way around. And then you just, I help if I put it together right. There we go. That's fitting better. And then, yeah, so you just wrap it all around, fold it up, and there you go. And there's your stove. Now it does have a little bowl for liquid fuels. So if you've got a liquid fuel, see you got these little slots here. You could put it in, it would hang in that and you can use liquid fuel. You can also use those uh, solid fuel tabs that I, uh, I, I bought that uh, I've seen you with, you have, sorry, I've shown you guys with my other stoves. So, or you can use it and just make a fire. It does have breathing holes in the bottom. So I've got to keep it out of water. So you can put your sticks in the front, or you can put them in the top, and then you can cook with your top surface here. So this is what I'm gonna use today. I've been meaning to use this for over a year now since I got it. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Let's test it out. Thing I'm learning about using the stove is that uh, you're really going to make your twigs really small. Uh, it's not a big fire pit, so to speak, and uh, because of that, uh, your twigs, they I mean, they just stick out everywhere. And I guess um, maybe that's why the holes in the front, so you can just stick them in from the front. Perhaps that's uh, perhaps that's the key, and we'll, we'll try using that. Take a look so far. I'm slowly getting the fire going. It's been a little rough. Only my wife well, gave me. Seems to be kept. Just cut it up, put it in this pan, and fry it up a bit with some onions. And then I'm gonna drop in some, uh, drop in some beans. This is gonna taste darn good. Fire's just burning away there. Can't wait to eat. I am so hungry right now. I love this. I love being out in the woods, making a little fire like this. Little day trips. I was hoping to get Rookie Junior out, but it's still a little too cold for him so far. So, so there's sausages all. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this stove. I mean, it uh, it definitely is doing what it needs to do. And there you have it, guys. So that is me out in uh, the woods just trying out the new stove uh, that I got. Well, I say new, but I've had it for a year. I've just never used it yet. Uh, so what I wanted to do here, <clears throat> I want to show you guys the actual breakdown of the stove itself. And then I want to show you just a comparison to last year's stove that I have right here as well. On top of that, a nice little accessory that can go with either of these uh, items so that uh, just stuff for you to have and stuff for you to know about so when you're out there you, you have options and that uh, you might have something with you and not only are they great for just in their emergency type of situation but on top of that they're just fun to use when you're out in the woods to take a light meal have a bite to eat you know challenge yourself a little bit so uh, a lot of fun so let's take a look at the uh, the Lixada stove uh, so that's the bowl right there that comes with the uh, the item so you can put your liquid fuel in that. Now that raises it up uh, a few inches off of the bottom uh, of the fire pit. Now this isn't as pretty looking as it was when I first started the video because uh, it's been used and uh, always just been burned in a little bit. So it looks out of stove. And there goes the uh, hinge out of my uh, out of my stove as well. So that's not good. Well, that just slides back in there, hopefully, as easy as it came out. There we go. There we are. That's the stove. So, putting the stove together. This is just a matter of lay it out. Grab your base. It's got little slots on the side. Again, you, you saw this in the video. I just wanted to show you this again just to, just to have it all out there.
and it goes together that quick. And it's stable. And in terms of cooking surface, um, when I put the stove together and I was using my pot on it, because of the four corners and the four sides, it actually sat very well and very stable. Uh, and now at no point did it ever try to slip off. Um, mind you, I did keep it fairly stable on there as well. Now, uh, overall, the temperature I used uh, by making a fire, I noticed the um, the stability of the structure itself of the container has changed a little bit. Uh, the It's become a little bit warped. So I don't know if maybe the fire itself was maybe just too hot for it. Um, I did try to make myself a little bit of a bigger fire to try and keep myself warm. Probably not the best idea with this stove given the, the small size to it, but it did work and it would work a lot. Uh, it would probably work every time for it. However, the longevity of the stove I think would dwindle as you uh, continued using fires. So in terms of that uh, solid fuel like this here from Esbit, I think, uh, or a liquid fuel that you can get, uh, the different uh, types you can buy for camping would work just fine. Um, but the solid fuel, you don't have to worry about it leaking in your bag. Um, takes a little bit to light it, so make sure you have a uh, uh, some type of fire starting source, whether it be a lighter or a match, uh, those, either of those work just fine. If you need to use a ferro rod for this, um, what I found works best is just putting some bark around it, lighting up the bark, and eventually it will catch. So, and uh, that would just, of course, sit right down in here. And the height would actually be perfect because the flame does come pretty high off these Esbit uh, solid fuel cells anyways. So uh, I think that would work uh, just, just perfect, actually. And these things do give off a little bit of heat as well. So you uh, you get a little bit of heat out of that as well. So, so that's it for the stove. Um, I recommend it for anybody. I do. Uh, I really like this stove. Uh, I like this stove as well. But I really like this one a lot more. I found it much better uh, than, than what There I you have it, guys. That's the Lixada uh, folding pocket stove. Um, $20, about $20, uh, $17, $20 online. Uh, definitely worth the money. I recommend it to anybody, 100%. Now, as compared to the original stove I had last summer, uh, that I showed you guys in my previous video that I cooked with. So as you saw, I, it uh, folds up. Very simple, very compact, about a quarter of an inch thick, and um, has its own sort of locking mechanism the way it's it's built, right? Uh, so I like this design, and it opens up, and you use it like this. You put your solid fuel cell in, you burn it, and the flame is, is that your cooking surface becomes very close to the source of the flame, which you're going to burn food quickly, unlike this stove where your cooking surface tends to be a little bit higher. Uh, that being said, uh, this is still a good stove, though. I mean, it's, uh, it carries its own fuel. You can put these in just like that. It holds four of them, so you got a day's worth of fuel all there. And uh, it, it's good. You can adjust the size in case of you're using something smaller to cook with, so you can do that. But as well, something I haven't tried yet that I, that I realized today is, is that when your, your, your pot or your pan is right on top here, you're cooking very close to the surface of the uh, of solid fuel cell. However, in the bottom, you'll see holes. These also have spikes. So although the directions say, hey, cook like this, you could actually flip it upside down, have your cell underneath, and the flame will come up and spread out through these holes, giving you a little bit of a wider cooking uh, space, and it lifts up your pot a little bit higher. Uh, I don't know if that'll work. Uh, I'm going to try it out, see how well it works. It does give you a much flatter, broader cooking surface, which will work a little bit better. <clears throat> now, in terms of which is my favorite. So I've used both, um, and I've tried them out, both in uh, one in summertime, one in wintertime. Wintertime, a little bit harder to make uh, fire, but it did work. Got it going. It worked. It worked great. Uh, this one I had in the summertime. A uh, little more contained where I used a solid fuel, which in the summertime in the dry brush, there was no ban at that time, but still you got to be safe. This one I found worked great. Both will use solid fuel. Both will use an open source flame like a, just a regular fire. So uh, both are good stoves and I would recommend either one for anybody. However, my honest opinion, I find the Luxata stove to be a better product and I very much enjoy it uh, and I'll continue to carry that with me. 
uh, going forward in the in the bush. Now, so. in terms of um, accessories that go with either one of these stoves, so uh, we got the stove, <clears throat> we got your stove. Problem is wind. Wind can kill your flame. Wind can uh, ruin your fire. Wind can put it out your flame before you even get the fire started. Um, that's always, always, always going to be an issue. However, there are accessories you can buy with these that'll help you out. I bought this. And it's a pretty cool little device. Uh, it's just a barrier. You got your little legs here for standing up. <clears throat> and you can adjust it around any way you need to. Just like that. And you can enclose if you really need to as well. But you just, whatever distance you need it at, these little pegs here can get pushed right into the ground. See here? These little pegs here, you can push it into the ground and lock it into place. It's fantastic. One on each side, and voila. You get your wind barrier, and you can do it from all angles. Also will reflect heat a little bit to help you conserve your heat as well. So not a little bad little thing to have uh, when you're out in the bush, especially if uh, you're lost or stranded and you want to try and uh, conserve a little heat. Uh, while you're waiting, this this is if you're just using a small little fire. Obviously, you know this isn't going to help you in terms of keep yourself warm overnight. But while you're cooking something to eat, this can help. Uh, you know, uh, bring the heat a little closer to you and help send it over. So that's a it's a really really great little accessory to have. Um, and I haven't used it yet, so I don't know how it works. But the next time I'm out in the bush, I'll uh, try it out and uh, we'll see how that goes. So that takes it. <laughs> So that's it guys, uh, that's everything here for Gear Talk. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and see what I thought of the different products. And uh, certainly if you uh, uh, wanna buy any of these products, all these products were purchased on Amazon, very inexpensive. Um, they do take a little bit longer to get because they are coming from out of country. However, some of these products can also be purchased in store. In fact, with this one here, you can certainly buy that one in Cabela's or Bass Pro. They're a little bit bigger than this one. Um, they're more of an actual uh, fireplace than they are just a little hiking stove, but they are meant for hiking as well, so you can have a full-size stove with you and, and be safe. Um, they're a little more expensive, especially if you buy in the titanium. This one here, uh, it's it's only about 10 bucks more than what I paid online, but still, you know what, you can buy it if you want, if you need one right away. Uh, both amazing products, guys. So again, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to the Rookie Hunter channel on YouTube or join me on Facebook at uh, The Rookie Hunter. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have yourselves a great day.